Welcome to the Rust and Type tutorial. If you have Photoshop open and you're ready, let's get started. Come right up here to File and select New. For the width, let's enter in 400 and the height, 400. Resolution 72, color mode RGB. And we don't have to worry about the background contents right now. We'll get to that in just a moment. So when you have all this, go ahead and click OK. And then I'm just going to center my image here on the screen. Now we need to fill the background layer in with a color. So click on the foreground color on the toolbar. And then right down here, select the hex value input area here by selecting it. And then enter in 702D07. And that'll give us that uh, color we want for the texture. After you have that, go ahead and click OK. And then now select the paint bucket on the toolbar and then click on the image to fill in the background. Perfect. Now come right over here to the layers palette and we need to make a new layer. So click on the new layer icon right down here. And then now click on the foreground color once more So we need because we need to change the color of the foreground. Uh, this time, right down here where the hex value input is, enter in 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. After that, go ahead and click OK. And then make sure the paint bucket is selected. It should be still selected, but then just click on the image and to fill that layer in with that color. All right. Now come, uh, come up here to Filter. And down here to Noise, select Add Noise. And make sure the amount is 16. So it's 16% and distribution should be Gaussian and monochromatic should be checked. After you have that, click OK. And then come right back up here to Filter and then go down here to Stylize. Then select Diffuse. And from the, from the uh, Diffuse options here, make sure Lighten Only is dotted right there. And after that, go ahead and click OK. All right, now click on the Magic Wand tool on the toolbar. It's right here. After that, come up here to the options bar, and for the tolerance, make sure that's two. You can, you can experiment with one, two, or three. Anything above that, we might not get the result we need, but uh, if you have smaller images, then try to, in, try to enter a tolerance of one. Uh, if you have a really big one, then go about three. I'm gonna do about two for this image. I'm gonna make sure anti-aliased is checked, and these other two over here need to be unchecked. Okay, contiguous and all and use all layers should be unchecked. And when you have all that, click on the image with the magic wand tool. And next, press the delete key on the keyboard. And then now come up here to select, deselect. After that, make a new layer. Come down here to the new layers palette, click on the new layer icon, and then click on the foreground color on the toolbar because we'll need to change the color again and select the hex value input area and enter in 989797. And when you like that, go ahead and click OK. And then use the paint bucket to click on that layer to fill it in with that gray. Now we need to select hard light from the layer blending modes menu here. So click on a little arrow that points down and then come down here to hard light. All right. And next we need to make a, uh, an adjustment layer for this layer. And this is really easy to do. Just come down here and click on the Create Fill or Adjustment Layer button here. And I want you to select Brightness Contrast. Okay, when that comes up, uh, let's enter in about 23 for the brightness. And this is all you know experiment, experimentation right here, depending on how dark or how much you really want that texture to stand out. You would do all those adjustments right here. Uh, but for the contrast, let's see here. Uh, let's go about uh, about 40. About 40 for the contrast. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. All right. Now the fun part. We're going to start to create our type for the Rust and Type image. So come over to the toolbar and select the Horizontal Type tool and make sure the Horizontal Type Mask tool is selected from that menu here. And when you have that, click on the image and you should get the cursor and make sure to create a just for the first time create a large letter and that way we can really see what we're doing I'm gonna make this just this huge R on my image here 
There we go. I'm going to use the times typeface. Uh, I'm just going to come down here to times. And then set my point, maybe 300 points. Actually, let's go to 400. Let me see how that looks here. If you want to reposition the type, hold down the control key, and that's the command key on the Mac, and you can reposition. See, you get the little, uh, you see the little black arrow there? Then that means you can click on it and just do a reposition there. I'm going to try 450 just, just to see. Yeah, that, that'll work good. 450 points. Then to confirm that, I'll go ahead and press the enter key on the keyboard. You should see your type selected there. And so if you've gotten this far, go ahead and uh, go up here to edit and then go down to copy merged. And then go back up to edit again and select paste. And you can see our letter R on the top layer there. And next we're going to create a inner shadow with the layer style. So uh, go up here to a uh, layer and down here to layer style and select inner shadow. And then as soon as that comes up for the opacity, uh, go ahead and enter in 100%. And then the distance will be three. The choke will be four. And the size will be 13. And when you have that, click OK. OK, and after that, we're going to create an adjustment layer. So we're going to need to uh, hold down the Alt key on the keyboard. Hold that key down, and that's uh, option on the Macintosh. And then come down to the bottom of the Layers palette and click on the Create Fill uh, or New Adjustment Layer button here. And then select Hue and Saturation. And then when that comes up, Check where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Make sure that's checked and then go ahead and click OK. Then you should see the hue and saturation come up here and uh, turn down the saturation all the way until it says uh, minus 100. And then for the lightness, turn down the lightness to about minus 40. OK, when you have that, go ahead and click OK. All right, we're almost done here. It's, it's looking pretty sharp. Uh, the next step is to, what we're going to do is erase away some of the rust so we can see the new metal underneath it. This is really cool. Uh, come over here and select the paintbrush or the brush tool on the toolbar. And then you're going to want to select this uh, rough brush uh, to do this uh, just to get the, you know, the coolest effect. So come all the way down on the brush, brushes preset picker Come down here, and if you look down right about here, you'll see some uh, some rough splatter type brushes. Okay, uh, these are really cool, and they really create some interesting uh, uh, scratches and things on your images. So uh, maybe like about a 46 or or 39 pixel size will work just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and make a 46 size there, and just double click on the one that you want. Okay, and after that come right over to the layers palette and make sure layer 2 is activated. And now come right over to the image and you're going to want to paint right on the edge of the text, okay? Or, or on the edge of the type here. Just just take the uh, paintbrush and just click the mouse and go right along the edges and you can see you're scraping away some of the, some of the rust that's on the image and making it a little lighter. This really makes it look realistic. Go around the image right here it looks like it's it's a little worn on the edges and it really makes it look hot. Check that out. Other cool effects is that you can you can select the pencil tool on the toolbar and with a one pixel uh, brush you can just come in here and add some scratches. See that? Just you know wherever just randomly add these scratches on the image and that really makes a big difference. Of course, it looks like it has that uh, concrete uh, type look or like a wall it has been scratched up. All I'm doing is I have the pencil tool and I'm just coming over here with a one pixel size brush and just you know moving like jiggling the mouse back and forth to create these little uh, scratches on here. And you know, I mean, it doesn't really take a lot of talent. I mean, I'm, I'm not even that talented. So, you know, it, it really, it's just really easy to do. Uh, you just wiggle the mouse back and forth and it'll uh, do that little, uh, it'll make a little line there, a little white line. And if you want to go back to the other brush, just select the paintbrush or the brush tool 
and you know you can go over here make some you know patches of you know if it doesn't look good just go ahead and click OK and there you go and if you want those uh, if you want these the, the faded areas more noticeable more bright then you would change the color of the foreground just go up here and raise the color of the foreground a little lighter and now go back through and you can see it's just a little lighter and sometimes if it's too light then it won't look real because it'll go all white and that doesn't look that doesn't look too hot for this particular effect but uh, there you go and that is some beat up old uh, worn out rust I tell you so now you know how to do it you can just make whole words uh, if you want to make like a logo or something uh, just type out do the, do the same thing but next time make the make the uh, image a little wider and then may, maybe make the height a little narrower and then you could just put a whole word like just type out rust and and do the whole thing and then just come back through and I think yeah the funnest part for me is just after I get the R done or not the R but after I get the type done and the rust I'll come back through and I'll and I'll, I'll take the brushes and I'll experiment and see how cool and rustic I can make it look and worn out and and that's where people look at it and then go how'd you do that you know well hey you gotta get the gotta get Mark CD to check it out no I'm just kidding but uh, that's how we do rust and type in Photoshop have fun see you later